Hello, and welcome to the first part of a series on protein expression, purification, and identification. This, um, this first video is just going to introduce why we would even care about expressing proteins in a lab, why we need gobs and gobs of protein in the lab to do things, and kind of where the series is going and the different things you'll be able to do once we finish the series on protein expression, purification, and identification. To give you a little bit of background, the first question that we're going to answer is, why express and purify proteins anyway? Now this list is not exhaustive, but the, the two big ones that I could think of at the moment are this. Basic research. So a lot of human health is based on understanding why the body does what it does. And so we can characterize proteins based on the type of chemistry that they do. We can characterize them based on protein binding partners. And these, these characteristics, it's sometimes really difficult to understand them just by looking at the cell. Sometimes we have to make a lot of protein and do some things on the lab bench so that it's on a scale that we can see and observe and control more tightly. Another reason to express and purify proteins is to produce pharmaceuticals. A lot of people are affected by diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, and insulin is a hormone, it's a drug, and it's a protein. So they used to have to purify insulin from animals, but now that we have modern genetics and all these ways of manipulating simple uh, simple model systems to overexpress proteins, we don't have to do that anymore. So we can make a lot more insulin, it's a lot more pure, and it's cheaper. So that leads us to the sources of protein. I already gave away kind of the sources of protein, but just to iron it out a little bit more clearly. Classically, if you were a researcher and you were purifying a protein, you were going to the slaughterhouse. You're going to go and get animal organs like brains, livers, pancreas, whatever you could get your hands on. And you're going to homogenize it, which means just to kind of blend it up, make it a, a smoothie, if you will, and then extract the proteins. That doesn't sound like fun to me. And if that's how science was done when I was going up through the ranks, I wouldn't be a scientist. All right? I would imagine that would stink. I don't know, I guess just the idea of it, just, mm -mm, nope, doesn't agree with me. Anyway, thankfully, now we use model systems to express our protein of interest. And protein of interest, I will abbreviate POI. So I'm writing these by hand, mostly because I don't have pre-made PowerPoint slides. And so this is easier, and I get to use colors like markers and crayons and stuff. And, you know, I have kids. I like to do the coloring thing. Anyway, you can use a model system like a bacterial system, E. coli. You can use yeast if you need a eukaryotic system. And it's very easy to genetically manipulate these systems to get them to do what we want. Mwahahaha. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. We're going to use bacteria as a model system. And the learning objectives for the entire series on protein expression, purification, and identification are as follows. You're going to be able to outline a general scheme for expressing, purifying, and identifying a protein. So we're going to lay that out for you over the course of the next three videos on how you can do that. Just a generic, this is how it works. You're also going to be able to go more in depth and use prior known, uh, shoot, prior knowledge, not prior known, see? This is real, y'all. If I were writing on the board, I'm going to correct myself. Use prior knowledge about your POI, the protein of interest, to develop a purification protocol. So that means knowing what the charge of your protein is given um, a particular pH, knowing the, um, what shape the protein is, if there's an antibody against your protein. Those are all things that you can use to form a purification protocol for your specific protein. 
and we're going to go over uh, forms of liquid chromatography because that's the one of the biggest tools that we have in our purification toolbox. Finally, we're going to go over advantages and disadvantages of gel electrophoresis and western blotting. And these two techniques are used for confirming the identity of the protein that you just spent days purifying. You don't want to do this whole process and then do whatever assay that you have in mind to characterize this protein and realize, I don't actually have the protein that I thought I did. So we have to confirm its identity. And there are many ways to do this, but we're just going to talk about gel electrophoresis and Western blotting as two techniques to do this. So this series, again, will have an additional three videos. So the first one that is coming up will be protein expression. So if you want to watch the whole series, just click on the next button and you'll be able to see protein expression. That's all for now. Have a good one.